Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Remain Relevant by Becoming a Digital Leader. My name is Kevin Ordonez, and I'm the co-founder of .org Community, as well as co-author of two books on disruption and organizational transformation. I'm also president of .org Source, a consultant agency dedicated to positioning associations for success. So now please join me and welcome Sherry Budjak, founder and CEO of .org Source. Thanks, Sherry. Great, thank you, Kevin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I will give you a little bit of background. Uh, I've been working with associations uh, to help them with digital strategy for more than two decades. I've been at the forefront of technology disruption throughout my career, not because I had a technology uh, background, but I embraced technology as it enabled me to innovate and create new business opportunities. Um, I graduated college uh, with the goal to become an executive director of a nonprofit someday. However, my journey took me on a bit of a different path. So in 1994, uh, I had the opportunity to work on developing one of the first, if not the first uh, website for association when I was at the American Association of Neurological Surgeons. Then two years later, I was asked to join another association to start a for-profit subsidiary that developed websites for associations. Um, so as we approached Y2K, we had over 100 association websites that we were managing as well as everyone's anxiety of what might happen uh, at Y2K. But then uh, over my nine years there, I ended up overseeing 32 staff in three departments, which included IT, web services, and the for-profit subsidiary. So as I mentioned, I had no technical background, yet I was responsible for about a quarter of the organization and overseeing everything related to IT. So our team uh, was innovating, not only for the association customers, but also internally as we supported departments exploring new opportunities. Uh, during that time, we partnered with companies in Silicon Valley in the late 90s. Uh, we were on the forefront of exploring online learning opportunities. We created new online products that were supported by industry um, and much more. So we were always learning and innovating with the newest technologies and were given the authority and an ability to be creative and innovative as long as we were making a profit or providing great customer experiences. But after nine years, I decided to start my own company. So um, I founded .org Source 15 years ago, and here we have been helping associations and nonprofits with their digital transformations, uh, improve their operations, uh, guide technology strategies, and help them seek opportunities to build value. Um, so additionally, over the last couple of years, um, I've authored two books along with my co-author, Kevin Ordonez. Uh, these books include stories from CEOs and suggestions on how to position your organization for success through disruption. So one of the lessons of our newest book is the future success means embracing the attitudes that will keep you on par with what is coming with industry 4.0 and being aware of trends like by 2021, one quarter of the top 100 consumer good companies will be using 3D printing to create custom products on demand. Uh, by 2025, 75% of the total workforce will be millennials and their resumes will list skills we barely register today. By 2027, many employees will count robots among their coworkers. So while we've written two books to help the industry with technological disruption that was coming, we had not expected the rapid need for associations to have to pivot so quickly because of a pandemic. While this pandemic is a health crisis and shock to the system, it's a driving rapid adaption of digital technologies and ways of working needed for associations to stay relevant. As recently as February, moving forward with technology related projects may have felt impossible for many, but then came the crisis, which made organizations focus on rapidly changing the way that they work. 
So some things that would have normally taken years to implement had happened in, in merely a few days. Um, so what we saw is there was, there was, and there still is a lot of panic for many organizations. Uh, we started hearing from associations on how they were late to the party on having laptops so staff could work from home, being able to conduct digital payments, needing access to physical files, um, and overall virtual ways of working were, were challenging. We even heard of one association who closed their doors for 30 days because it was too hard for them to move their operations to a remote environment. Uh, many leaders are finding wide gaps in their technical capabilities. Um, they're realizing they must rapidly raise their digital skills to be efficient in this fast changing environment. So how can leaders shift behaviors, mindsets, and ways of working in such a short period of time both for themselves and their teams. You can, um, you can stay on that slide, Emily. Um, so to understand the pathways to digital, uh, digital transformation, we first need to know what is standing in the way. So first, I would say, you know, thinking digital is somebody else's job. Well, I think the first barrier to anything digital is thinking that IT or somebody with the digital title needs to be in charge of everything that's digital. Um, the reality is, is that digital should be a part of the entire organization. And while the CEO um, ensures the technology is enabling the business, other roles should be accelerating digital. So for example, um, HR should be thinking strategically about the future of the workforce needs, Education should be developing skills and knowledge on how to deliver education in new modalities. Finance should contribute to the company's data advantage. Of course, marketing should drive the online customer experience and deeply understand the customer's evolving digital presence and needs. And someone should be responsible for harnessing data as a competitive advantage. There's definitely a role for everybody to play. Um, the second thing is waiting for the right time or everything to be perfect. I think one thing that we have uh, that has taught us during this health crisis is that inaction has a price. So um, the same goes for organizations that fail to move ahead to deploy digital tools and operating models as minimal viable product products that can evolve over time. The other thing that gets in the way is thinking that digital is about efficiency and doesn't enable innovation. You know, organizations need to foster the right culture and mindset to encourage experimentation, failure, and learning around new digital operating models and experiences. Otherwise, great ideas from your employees will get crushed under the weight of red tape, especially an organization in short-term crisis mode. As a result, you may focus on using digital to reduce costs during the crisis and miss the opportunity to generate novel thinking and opportunities that could deliver advantages for your association. So during this crisis, we witnessed some organizations that normally think digital first be able to easily and quickly pivot. So for example, the uh, Society for Critical Care Medicine has had a work from home and pandemic policy for more than 10 years. They not only could easily keep working, whether it was due to a, sh sh I'm sorry, snowstorm here in Chicago or a pandemic. Um, so they were easy, they could easily jump into action. And in this case was able to easily start helping them, their members in real time with information on highly trafficked web webinars and coordinate volunteers to be redeployed to New York City and much more. They really didn't miss a beat when it was required for the organization to work from home and serve their important industry. So what talent is required? So I like to talk about this in kind of three different roles. Um, so really to stay relevant and to think digitally, it's important for organizations to have someone or multiple people hold the roles of what I consider a digital strategist, innovator, and driver. So what are these roles? So a digital strategist stays ahead of emerging technologies and trends, and they envision how the organization can leverage these technologies in the future. A digital innovator 
looks for ways to kind of disrupt the status quo and thinks about tech, how technology can position them for success and finds ways to overcome legacy mindsets and new ways of working as well as new business opportunities. And then you need a digital driver, someone who can build trust and collaborate across the organization. And it is important that this role can act quickly and be agile. So this might be one person, three people, multiple people, or your entire organization. Now more than ever, it's time to bring digital transformation forward. Um, Short-term survival is a priority right now, but to thrive in the medium or long-term, it may be necessary to revisit digital transformation plans. And I would even raise the question of whether we should be thinking in terms of digital transformation. More than ever, the new normal created by the coronavirus has forced businesses to adapt and the reality of digitization or really face going out of business. Uh, I believe that this is opportunity for lasting change and, th and, this is, and this is an opportunity to really learn, improve, and build up on your digital capabilities. So what are the strategies that you should be considering? Um, so some of the key strat strategies to accelerate this um, set of skills include um, several things as I kind of outlined here. First of all, use scenario planning to anticipate both short and long-term shifts. And you know, amid the crisis, every business will be presented with unique challenges, but also lots of opportunities to leverage technology and unlock new opportunities around customer experiences, products, and operations. So using scenarios lens will help associations make a more balanced bets versus overweighting in the near term. Uh, it provides you with strategies and options to pivot quickly uh, with market changes. And recently, uh, as Kevin had mentioned, we have been doing webinars and Sharon Rice, who works with our customers on business strategy, provided a webinar on scenario planning. And you can access that presentation at orgsource.com slash real solutions. So another key strategy is leveraging data to monitor and and monitor early signs of change. Um, it's really important to understand how your customers were and were not engaged during these times. And using data to monitor behavior will help you make decisions as you need to pivot. So one organization that I recently spoke with, um, they were tracking their member engagement during this crisis. They saw very low open rates on very important information they were trying to provide. And they started trying to analyze that data and asking why, um, realizing that their members were bombarded with a lot of content, they decided to kind of rebrand their content and they, are, they, they present or send out emails at three o'clock every day with three things to talk about. So they branded it three at three, and they saw their open rates significantly increase and engagement increase. So simple pivots can make a difference, but if you aren't looking at the data or understand what is and isn't working, you can't make those adjustments. Another strategy is to launch organizational experiments with emerging technology. So start watching for what some of the for-profit companies are doing in universities. Um, are doing to keep their constituents uh, engaged. For example, Purdue University is exploring virtual reality for its upcoming graduation. And this might be, or may or may not come to fruition, but it could be something maybe associations think about how to use technology like that to implement its award ceremony um, and you know, kind of look out for those creative opportunities. So I would encourage you to try out low cost, quick win solutions during this time. But just keep in mind, if they don't work out, don't get stuck and move on. Um, and you know, also get creative with serving your customers virtually. You know, the pandemic has spurred incredible innovation with how organizations could continue to stay connected and serve their customers. You know, we've all seen Skype-based courses, Zoom room networking events, virtual team building workshops, Periscope jam sessions, and all of these are obviously becoming very popular with the way that we have to work today. 
Um, but as association leaders, you know, we always all talk about how to keep our members engaged and we have for a long time. I think this is a time for you to think outside the box and consider what other groups are doing to keep people engaged. You know, I'm watching like my daughter has a soccer team and they meet weekly, but they have ongoing things that they have to do every day. Um, so they're posting videos um, of them doing soccer activities on Instagram and they're doing virtual trivia nights on Friday nights and just kind of explore like all the creativity that's going on around you. Um, I would also say, you know, empower your employees to innovate and co-create. I would say set aside some space in your week. I know everybody's extremely busy right now, but try to set aside space in your week for your teams to innovate. Um, but most importantly, focus on shifting the mindset and culture. Give your teams the opportunities to learn, fail fast, and ensure that they're getting the training they need to succeed. So let me emphasize one point. There's no safety in the status quo. Um, the digital marketplace demands that you let go of the past, challenge current assumptions, and lead on what's next. Emily, if you can move the slide. Um, associations must redirect their reliance on tradition at, to an approach that is future-oriented and transformational. We can't ignore the competition because it surrounds us, and we can't apply tactics that we've relied on in the past. So without a different approach, you know, I believe it'll be challenging to perform at the level the marketplace demands. The consumer environment is filled with options and opportunities. Um, as buyers, we all know that we're increasingly able to control what and when and how we can make a purchase. Um, online networking and conferencing are creating new avenues for collaboration uh, uh, very rapidly. And this is an opportunity um, to provide your constituents with on-demand education, knowledge, and connections. So uh, what we, we had asked you know, questions uh, when pe we were registering and a lot of people were asking, what are others doing? So I thought I'd show you a few examples to provide you with a little bit of inspiration. So the Emergency Nurses Association is doing a great job of fostering camaraderie and support of the profession. ENA used social media such as LinkedIn to invite members to participate in a virtual e-board to show appreciation to emergency nurses and all health professionals on the front lines. So they use something called Kudo Board. AARP immediately structured pathways for community involvement. They knew that people's lives and relationships were disrupted. So they provided support through community linkage and a new way to social integration. The National Restaurant Association Education Foundation launched the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund to support restaurant workers impacted by COVID-19, partnering with Guy Fieri, the Food, the food Network, and others. At .org Community, we launched a program called In Lieu of Lunch, using Zoom to hold regular conversations with our members on what is impacting them today and created a place to share solutions. The Virginia College of Emergency Physicians president had contacted them to tell, tell, let them know that he had created an intubation shield and they actually worked with him to not only sell it but distribute it um, in the state of Virginia. ACA, they push out daily huddle uh, briefing videos for their members, and this has become very popular. And you know, these are only a few things. There's a lot of other things happening, and we are actually collecting these stories that we're going to share with you all in the future. Um, so now on to so now I'm going to talk about a few things that to consider for you to remain relevant. So I a couple things that that I would suggest is find tools to cultivate community and engagement and provide opportunity for your members to solve problems together. Make sure that you have someone who is responsible for delivering a great user experience. It's never been more important to test out the online experience and the steps your constituents are taking um, to engage with you online. And most importantly, I encourage you to stay curious and try new things. 
So as Bob Eager said, the riskiest thing we can do is maintain the status quo. So now I'm gonna take a few minutes to address some of the other questions that were sent in. So first, several of you asked, what do we do if we're just getting started? So I put together just a few tools that we use that have been effect effective for us and many of our customers. Um, first is Microsoft Office 365. You know, it not it only provides you with e email and, um, uh, and access to productivity tools, but you can use Office 365 for team collaboration, um, document sharing. We see a lot of times that people aren't using the full suite of what Office 365 provides. So if you have Office 365 and you don't feel that it allows you to do a lot of collaboration, contact your vendor and maybe they can help you show you some other tools within the product offering that will help you in a virtual workplace. Zoom, which you all are probably using right now. I think we're all living on Zoom, right? Uh, Reich for project management, Microsoft Power BI, which is free. And we love using a slide model and beautiful AI to, for, to create uh, presentations and collaborate uh, with presentations. So next, as you can imagine, we also received a lot of questions around virtual meetings. So I put together a list of, of virtual meeting tools that you can use if you are doing this yourself. Um, so some of those include Hopin, uh, that has a lot of engagement, Zoom, Zoom, you can do breakout rooms. Uh, a new feature is you can broadcast your Zoom event on, on Facebook Live, uh, go to webinar, Amazon Chime, ReadyTalk, Vimeo, Poll Anywhere. Um, and I came across a couple interesting products, Six Connects and Entrato Studio are more vir kind of virtual reality forums um, and products, which is kind of cool. Um, digital whiteboard, mural. But if you want a full list of vendors, we actually have been putting together a list of vendors that both can help you create an event or, um, or some tools where you can do it yourself. So uh, if you want to reach out to me uh, at sherry at orgsource.com, I will definitely be happy to send you that Excel sheet that we've been keeping. So as we said, um, we've been conducting webinars, uh, producing papers and content over the last several weeks for the association community. I just wanted to let you know, you can find all of those resources there at www.orgsource.com slash real solutions. Um, but the best way to keep up with the content we're producing, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have your phone handy, click on the camera, hold it up to the QR code on your screen, and you will be directed to my LinkedIn, and you can connect with me there. So I'll give you guys a second to do that in case you are in the process of taking out your phone. But in the meantime, if you need help with projects, including but not limited to digital strategy, just know that we are here to help. And if you would like to schedule a 30 minute consultation with me, again, I have another QR code here that you can hold your phone camera up to the screen and that will connect you to my calendar to schedule a 30 minute call. So with that, um, that's what I have for today. And I think we've got like four or five minutes to take a few questions. Great, thanks Sherry. So to submit a question, go ahead and uh, use the chat. Uh, we did uh, try to roll in some of your questions during the registration. Uh, certainly uh, 30 minutes doesn't give us a lot of time, but um, we did our best here. And I guess the best way is to uh, contact Sherry and she'll give you that list as well as um, for a 30 minute consultation. And I know some of you have been uh, chatting uh, the panelists throughout uh, today's session. And uh, don't forget about our um, all access pass for the next 90 days, Come, call it your summer access to content, uh, just for $99. And um, we encourage you to sign up for that. So I see a, a question coming in. Um, if we don't currently have a 
Digital strategy, is it too late to pivot? And uh, what tips do you have for engaging staff who are resistant to digital change? Well, so I, I actually did a presentation with David Martin at one point, and he actually said that um, they actually don't hire people who can't think digitally or work in their kind of digital environment. Um, and it's really kind of a, a culture from the top down of not only uh, creating a culture that is focused on digital, but to also make sure that you're helping with training and telling them how you, they are gonna be able to make improvements or do their job easier with some of these technologies. I know, Kevin, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, it's, it's a big change for all of us, especially those who um, may not have a work from home policy or that's brand new. Um, you know, certainly getting uh, uh, encouragement from the top is helpful. Uh, we're working with a customer now and uh, what they did was they did a check-in with their uh, project leaders from an HR perspective, just to see how things were going, uh, managing remotely, uh, things of that nature. So it's important to, to check in with staff just to see how they're doing, you know, ask them how their day is going and see what other resources you can provide them uh, is going to be important. And um, I know that question about tips about engaging, you know, who are resistant to change, that, that's part of a challenge um, regardless. And uh, certainly change is, change is hard, but also it's the change um, that makes us in our uh, get out of our comfort zone and really moves the needle forward. Uh, so we just have to encourage our folks that, you know, we're all in this together and to, uh, it's good sometimes to be in your, out of your comfort zone because we're all, all going to push that needle forward. All right, great. Well, we are at the top of the hour. So we appreciate everybody uh, everybody's time today and feel free to reach out if you have we can help you in any way or answer any questions that you might have great thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we'll get the uh, recording and the presentation and the uh, ce certificates out to you uh, within the next 24 hours and also next week we have another webinar uh, at the same time and so look out for the uh, registration details on that session so we'll end today's session and we appreciate um, you spending the 30 minutes with us.